Welcome to Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development. That's the current time of 9.42 a.m. on the Eastern Time on Monday, on July 25th. Hope you had a great weekend, by the way. Ethereum could $1,525. That's about close to 4.5% so far. Respect over crypto market and the equity market on this Monday morning so far. I will say across the board is relatively down to flat as we're kicking off a relatively big week ahead of us with respect to, you know, the biggest one that's coming is with respect to the FOMC meeting uh, that's going to be happening from tomorrow on the 26th all the way to 27th. But the real catalyst that we're going to be, you know, getting some confirmatory signal would be laying on the 27th as they conclude the meeting with the transcript. And I believe there will be some, uh, I think, a webcast that we'll be hearing from Jerome himself on. Are we going to be going with 75 basis point? Are we going with 50 basis point? Are we going to go straight up uh, to 1%, uh, 100 basis point, basically, right? Which will be bananas. Um, and uh, if that's what, that was the case, you know, a sell off will be quite dramatic um, onto the entire market, not just specifically for crypto or equity one or the other but it will be for the collective market um and respect to the foreshadow perspective uh, i would say you know the rally that we've seen before was quite premature um and as of this morning i think investors are quite worried um you know in you know kind of a mixed bag at the moment which you know well firstly the vix is high at three percent while at the same time, the, on the equity side, Dow Jones and S and P are still lingering on, uh, being up about zero point one nine percent, but not really up, right? Just kind of floating in the green territory, just uh, consolidating. Nasdaq and Russell are both down, but Russell two K is uh, down about two percent at the moment. And looking at some of the uh, you know, major you know, seismic earnings that's coming out. Um, so Facebook is obviously has been kind of shaky with respect to their transitions uh, or their, I guess, evolutions of their platform to try to stay competitive against TikTok, um, you know, have, you know, drove some sell off recently. I believe last Thursday it, it was down about 5 percent, 6 percent at one point because of that news that got broke out. And I think a lot of, um, you know, people or users have been, you know, utilizing Facebook or Meta, the platform find the tabs and, and and all the configurations and the user interface to be quite confusing. It seems like, you know, with the departure of Sheryl Sandberg, which, you know, the COO of, um, you know, uh, Facebook or Meta, which was one of the, you know, visionary leaders um, on to, you know, making what Facebook it is the, w- the way it is today, right? Or Meta, the way it is today. So, so it seems like, you know, just negative news over negative news. And now it seems like the in- user interface or the value proposition of Facebook is kind of shaky, right? And we're going to hear more about the management team on how they're going to be triangulating, you know, with the downturn um, and with what they foreshadow their business will looking like going forward. So this will also be lying on, you know, in the middle of this week. And then what else should we be looking at? Um Another one that I'm also seeing, um, you know, I don't know why that is. Seems like there's uh, some talks about, you know, the spread of monkeypox. Uh, it seems like it's getting quite severe uh, at domestic, uh, on a domestic level. And it seems like there's a, 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 a emphasized uh, article on talking about monkeypox could spread well beyond the community of the gays and bisexual men. I don't know why that have to be anything, I, but, you know, I guess they, they have to write news for the sake of writing news. So uh, I'm not sure how that is a transmittable disease, you know, to the, you know, lesbian, you know, the LGB community. But it is what it is. But it seems like the cases are still, you know, lingering on in, in more of a secondary affectation. And... Um, and some of the other, uh, again, right, earnings that we have to be watching out for, you know, would be, you know, um, how we seeing the uh, Snapchat rebound looking like going forward, knowing the fact that we saw like a 36% dip earlier. And also, like, we also need to look out for some of the guidance as, you know, Wall Street is making the revision for stocks like, I don't know, Snap, Apple, Amazon, Disney, um, 
McDonald's, Spotify, blah blah blah, etc., etc. And um, that's pretty much it overall. Again, right, the main catalyst that we need to look out for tomorrow is going to be the FOMC meeting, and um, yeah, that's going to be laying tomorrow and the day after. So we'll see how it goes, right? So. And my gut feeling, based on the technical, is that we should see some short-term volatility like in the down downtrend perspective. So looking at the technicals, um, you can see that as of recording of 9.48 a.m. on the Eastern Time, we are already breaking from the 15.50. So level down will be 14.50, and at the same time, we've dragged up for ever since like on June 23rd. And at the same time, we got canceled like basically one, two, three, four, five, six times with a 60 out of 70 right now. So quite worrisome um, in the in the short term, obviously. So we need to kind of come back down to earth, maybe ideally to the level of 1250. Um, you know, and I because the reason I'm saying 1250 is because that's a real consolidated level that would form as a platform uh, all the way to, you know, even a thousand, depending on how flash you know we could crash right but we should ideally see that um and then but weeks to months out i see quite bullish momentum knowing the fact that you see a golden cross above before him we're still relatively depleted at 35 out of 70 monthly as well looking for a cross section up bouncing from the bottom at 41 out of 70 so bitcoin uh is also doing the same thing right you could see that we are on a monthly you know have crossed down for quite some time so we'll need to kind of come back up so the worst level that we could ideally come down to would be somewhere around like the 11,500, right? Uh, on the weekly as well, you can see that we're about to form a golden cross, 33 out of 70. So I do like this. I think it's quite bullish on a weekend month out. But on the daily perspective, you need to kind of cross down. So ideally coming down to like 18,500 minimal, all the way down to again, right, 11,500 like we talked about on more of a week monthly perspective. You can see that we got canceled out as well, like one, two, three, four, five, like a bunch of times. So with the 50 out of 70 at the moment. So coming down, you know, ideally, you know, getting some support at 35 out of 70. So that translates into somewhere around like 18,500 can be a possibility. And also I spent some good time uh, on a picnic yesterday uh, with uh, a lot of startup founders and also met with the second employee at AVAX uh, or Avalanche. Um, which I learned a lot about the technology and respect to the technical front, just like, I don't know, opportunistically looking at it because I met the founder yesterday, Philip Liu, um, share a picture on my, um, on my Instagram and also on my Facebook, uh, community chat thing. Um, yeah, great guy. You know, he, uh, finished, uh, Cornell undergrad in like literally three years. Uh, he almost wanted to be, you know, pursuing his master at Cornell as well for the fourth year. But he decided to just like, you know what, I will um, start working in consulting. He worked in consulting for about a little bit. And then he worked overseas in uh, one of the largest uh, private equity uh, venture capital fund called JD Capital. And after that, he, um, uh, you know, saw one of the, you know, the founders of AVAX uh, publish an article on uh, cryptocurrencies and, you know, blockchain technology. And he got very intrigued. Next thing you know, that cultivate into, um, you know, building a team, you know, of AVAX. A scale from a team of, like, literally three people. Now it's a, you know, team, you know, with offices around the world um, at the age of 27. So it was really great. Uh, and uh, so he, he told me a lot of interesting stories as well about, like, you know, some of the early hiccups that he had, both, you know, both on the technical front, but also on an operational front and obviously at this as the business scale to a, a size of it is now um you know also some like political hurdle that he also jumped over so it was quite interesting quite insightful but on a technical front i would say it's trading on a comparable application compared to like the leading coins still going to be crossed down like you could see clearly we got canceled out like so many times one two three four five six times at the 53 out of 70. so seeing some cooldown is going to be more logical but on a weekly and monthly out, um, if you just like look at it on more of a stretched out perspective, um, it's uh yeah you can see that clearly with about to cross up. So still quite bullish on a weekly and monthly out. And then I would say that's applicable across all the other coins. Um, so that's something to look out for. We it seems like we are all consolidated at the respective levels. 
um, you know, again, short term volatility, lo- like in the weeks and months out, it should be bullish from here. Well, have a good day, guys, and uh, sorry for the rambling. Um, and I appreciate you for joining me every single day. And take care. Bye.